what I think? Wait a minute. Do you know what I think? I think the riot should have continued. Think about it this way. The Prime Minister, on holiday. There's no head of the police. Had the riots gone on one day longer, the X-Men might have shown up. <laughs> How cool would that have been, right? How many Dabidans need to burn before Wolverine saves the day? As for Dabidans, wait a minute, ladies. Did you see the spring-summer J. by Jasper Conran collection? Let it burn. <laughs> But this is what I don't understand. Why don't we have... Hey, uh, my dear. Focus. <laughs> There's plenty of time for that later. This one. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't we have superheroes? Because we got tons of super baddies, right? Like literally Marvel Universe super baddies, right? Like Gaddafi in Libya, we don't have any more. But he looked like a Marvel Universe super baddie, right, didn't he? Yeah. We have Kim Jong-il in North Korea. We got Mugabe in Zimbabwe. We got Karl Lagerfeld in Chanel. All of them. <laughs> They're uh, straight out of Marvel Universe, right? All of them. And why is it all the super baddies, all the super baddies, they're either dictators or designers? <laughs> why? Because they're all just drag queens with bad attitudes. I mean, get off here. She was the biggest drag queen in the Middle East. I mean, please, she looked like Marco Pierre White in Panto. And it's great that they got her, right? It's great that they got her, but it's good news, bad news, right? It's good news for the people of Libya. They're free. It's bad news for the people of Greenwich. They need to find a new Panto Dame. They're doing Aladdin. And that Kim Jong-il, what a drag queen she is, right? <laughs> Doing that lesbian dyke drag, her, right? I mean, give the bitch a guitar, she could open for LaRue. <laughs> Don't try it. And the biggest drag queen of all, right? Carl Lagerfeld, I mean, she is one bad collection away from playing Thursday nights down the White Swan. Don't pretend you don't know the White Swan. <laughs> And Vivian Westwood, she's a drag queen. She's a drag queen who's been at the party a little too long. Isn't she? I don't know. Did you go to the protests? You did? I thought you were rec I recognized you. So it's just you and me and Lily Cole, right? At the protest. I love a protest. Were you got people at the protest? Let me tell you, the protest was great. It was great, honest to God. You know, and you got a lot of bad news about the protest. I'm going to tell you the truth. People protesting about all sorts of things. Some people protesting against the cuts in education. Other people protesting against the cuts in healthcare. Some people protesting against the war in Afghanistan. I was protesting against Christmas decorations in November. <laughs> Tear them down! <laughs> what good did it, did it get us? Nothing. Right? I like a protest myself. I went to a great protest in New York, right? I don't know what it was. Who knows why? And uh, it, everyone was there, you know? The, the veterans and the vegans and the veterinarians, everybody was there, right? And I found myself behind the bisexual anarchists. Right? Now here's a little hint. If you ever find yourself at a protest, get behind the bisexual anarchists. In fact, a little life lesson. Get behind bisexual anarchy. <laughs> That's what these kids in St. Paul's want, a little bisexual anarchy, right? What is save Greece and Italy and Europe, a little bisexual anarchy. What is wrong with that oh, goddamn thing? You're gonna get a bit of that tonight, actually, a little bisexual anarchy, if you're lucky. I'm gonna quickly do a movie roundup and then we're gonna move on, okay? Best movie of the year? I'm gonna say it. Rise of the planet of the apes. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? You know what I'm talking about. For those of you who missed it, rise of the planet of the apes. All the apes, they escape the cages, they escape the zoos, they escape the labs, they take over San Francisco, they do all that without Twitter. <laughs> I know, my reaction exactly. Like, it's hard to believe, right? My only trouble, I couldn't figure out which one was Helena Bonham Carter because they all looked like her. <laughs> wasn't very nice, that's true, that wasn't very nice. She wasn't, no, she wasn't in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, she was in Troll Hunter. <laughs> that's 
that. She wasn't in that. That's not what it was. That wasn't Helena Bonham Carter. That was Stephen Fry. Yes, I said it. You know what? I don't care if he's a national treasure. I hate that bitch. What is that fat bitch so smug about? Why is she so smug? I'll tell you what. I know it's controversial. I'm going to say it. I think Stephen Fry took Maddie. No one checked his laptop, did they? No. No one would suspect that, would they? Anyway. I'm what they call in the business a triple threat. Okay? That means I can sing, I can dance, I can suck my own cock. If only I could learn accents, I'd be just like Meryl Streep. <laughs> she has a much bigger cock than me, so fair enough. But mostly I'm an actor, committed to my craft. It means I'm sucking my own cock all day long. But this is why I was surprised recently when I heard that Natalie Portman had given up acting. What? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Natalie Portman has given up acting. Now, this was a real surprise to me, because I've seen her in about four or five movies. I didn't even know she was an actor. You know what I mean? I thought she was some model, sort of wandered onto the set. Right? No, she's an actor. She's a completely unbelievable actor, Natalie Portman. Who saw her greatest performance in? Thor. You know what I'm talking about, right? You saw Thor. You, saw, you, you missed Thor? What are you, nuts? All right. Thor is the story of a Norse god who lives in space. There's a rainbow bridge. He's got a hammer. He crosses over the rainbow bridge. He comes down to Earth. He saves humanity. Okay? I live in Bethnal Green. I see a lot of crazy shit. I can believe that. <laughs> Then Natalie Portman walks onto the stage as an astrophysicist. I said, you were taking the piss, right? But I wasn't born yesterday, you know what I mean? That is crazy. Totally unbelievable, Natalie Portman is an astrophysicist. Come on, don't try it. I mean, you gotta work hard to be an astrophysicist, right? And we all know, pretty people don't work that hard. <laughs> Pretty people don't work that hard, don't try it. There's no such thing as a pretty astrophysicist. I've seen Brian Cox, he looks like a Burns victim. Don't try it. <laughs> and I like pretty people, but you know what? They got a place, face down, ass up. That's the truth. That is true. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Know your place, pretty person. Also blonde people, I love blonde people, but you know blonde people, yeah, I'm sure you lovely blonde people here, you are lovely people, but the thing you don't know, the rest of us can't tell you apart. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking to a blonde person at a party, the first 20 minutes I'm trying to figure out if it's Boris Johnson or Shakira. <laughs> no idea what's going on. I'll tell you, Jesus Christ. Anyway. I guess I get into stand-up comedy for the glamour. <laughs> you know, I mean, I thought it was going to be all cocaine and blowjobs with Paloma Faith backstage. <laughs> I am lucky if I get poppers and a tip rank with Peaches Geldof. <laughs> it's true, though. Actually, it's a pretty lonesome road. I find myself traveling a lot. For me, it's just another flea bag motel, cheap diner, and some stranger coming in my face. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Sometimes I wonder why I'm doing it, you know? Like, maybe I'm running from something, but what? The law? Do you know, I would have said that before I got that face replacement surgery in France. It seems to work out okay, just fine, you know. Occasionally I get mistaken for a Parisian hustler named Serge. Maybe I'm running for my kids. Yeah. 
<laughs> They're better off without old Whitey hanging around. <laughs> Maybe I'm running from love. Where's the punchline in that, my dear? Love. Enduring love. <laughs> I don't even know what enduring love is. Unless it's some sort of mini driver film. <laughs> Maybe it's that mini driver album. Yeah, that was called Enduring Mini Driver. That was something entirely different. I know what love is. Fleeting. And I know endurance. He's a Nigerian doorman worth the club down Hackney Road. And yes, he does live up to his name. Thank you very much. But enduring love. You know what I see? Love comes and goes. Hate. Now that lasts. And you see it in relationships all the time, don't you? Boyfriends walk in and out of your life. Ex-boyfriends? Cannot get rid of them. Do you know I have ex-boyfriends I have hated for longer than I loved them when we were boyfriends to begin with? So anyway, I want to dedicate this number. I'm going to do a number. I want to dedicate this number to all my ex-boyfriends, wherever you are. I sincerely hope that somehow you're dead. <laughs> Of course, I'll miss you, ignoring my texts at 3 in the morning. Posting holiday pics with your new boyfriend all over Facebook. Maintaining a relationship with my mother. Which makes complete sense, they're both stone-cold bitches. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to dedicate this to all my ex-boyfriends, my ex-crushes, my ex-shags, and my ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends, and my mother. Get it, peaches. I hope you're all dead. Wherever you are. It'll be good, you know. Thin the herd. I feel groggy and weary and tragic. Punchy and bleary and fresh out of magic, but alive. But alive. But alive. I feel bitchy and twitchy and manic. Calm and collected, yet choking with panic. I'm alive. I am alive. I'm alive. single one is real. I've a million different feelings, okay, but at least I feel. I feel rotten yet covered with roses. Younger than springtime and older than Moses. Frisky as a lamb. Lazy as a clown. Crazy, but I am alive. Yet shaky as jello, I'm alive. I'm alive, I'm alive. I feel half Tijuana, half Boston. Partly Jane Fonda and partly Jane Austen, I'm alive. I am alive, I'm alive. This kaleidoscope of feelings whirls around inside my brain. I admit I'm slightly cuckoo, but it's dull to be too sane. and bombastic. Lip is a puppet and super fantastic. I am alive. I am alive. I'm alive. All right, you. You thought you could treat me bad, didn't you? You thought you could just walk all over me. You thought you could come in my face and walk right out of my life. Well, forget it, mister. No one treats me like a whore and gets away with it. Except Lamar. And that's only when he's dressed head to toe in fubu. But as for you, mister, wait a minute. I'm going to teach you a lesson. You and all my ex-boyfriends, and my mother. Oh, you don't think I can, do you? Okay. Well, I'd say, ask Gianni Versace, but you know what? He's dead! Love, 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 love! And I feel partly in London, part Paris. A little Picasso, but a lot of Rolf Harris, I'm alive. I am alive, I'm alive, my dear. my tits off and horny on poppers, but I'm alive. I am alive, I'm alive. Everybody loves a winner, but nobody likes a flop. No one's asking how you got there once you made it to the top. And I feel up and together and steady. Eager, excited, so come on, I'm ready. Ready for the climb, baby, it's 
my time. You believe it? I'm alive and I feel brilliant, bombastic, and super fantastic. I am alive. get better, or as yeah. we would say, is better. It is going to get a lot better because we have a fantastic act up here. She is dynamite. You're going to love her. I love her so much. I can't believe it. She's absolutely delicious. I want to eat her right up. Ladies and gentlemen, I do, literally. Um, I know. Your name, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big bistro tech round, warm uh, round of applause to the lovely, the delicious Ms. May Martin. at job interviews or at, at formal dinner parties. Just prop a leg, open up the pelvis, give a lunch. It's great. Um, guys, no, so here, here I am. I, uh, I'm really excited to be here. David was talking about being alive. Um, that's kind of a, my mantra for 2011. I have a, a mantra this year. I don't know if anyone else has a mantra. No? Well, I, uh, my mantra is young and alive. I'm trying to feel young at heart and truly alive. Um, and I've actually, I've come up with the ultimate test of how to tell if you are, in fact, truly living your life young at heart and alive. Um, maybe you, sir, could do the test with me, would you mind? No. You're, you're, I saw, you're a firecracker, I saw <laughs> uh, What's your name, sir? JP. JP? JB. JB. Isn't that a whiskey? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, JB, if, this is the test. Imagine, if you will, and we can all imagine with JB, imagine you're in a dusty attic and you're just cleaning out all your old stuff in your attic um, and you stumble upon an old board game that you didn't even know that you owned and you pull the dust off it and it says Jumanji in big letters. <laughs> Would you play Jumanji? Would you roll the dice? Like, say you hear a distant jungle drum beat. Somewhere in the house, Robin Williams is laughing. Would you play Jumanji if you heard Robin Williams' weird voice in the, on the wind? You would, right? Would you guys play Jumanji? Would you? Yeah, I feel like in life, um, I truly feel like you, you must play Jumanji in life to really seize the day. And I asked my mom this on the phone recently. Um, she's in Canada, and I was talking to her on the phone. I was like, Mom, would you play Jumanji? And there was this, this long silence, and then I just heard... I was like, okay, relax, first of all. Um, my mom always speaks very emotionally and very close to a microphone. She's always breathing very heavily. Uh, and, like, and I was like, mom, come on. Just, and she's like, I don't know. I don't know if I can. I don't, I don't think I can do it. And I was like, mom, you've got to play Jumanji, young and alive. And she was like, okay, fine. If it'll make you happy, I'll play Jumanji. Um, and I was like, great, that's so badass, mom. That's amazing. And then I said, mom, what is Jumanji exactly? And she said, it's where you pile up the little wooden blocks in a tower and then you pull them out one by one. That's Jenga. Um, that is Jenga. But I love. I, I like. I like how long she hesitated. I like that she was like, I don't know. They make a. They make a really loud noise when they fall. Pretty terrifying. Um, yeah. So I'm. Uh, I'm trying to feel young and alive and, and seize the day. And I moved to England from Canada. Um, I came over in a canoe with Justin Bieber this morning. Um, and I, I moved here to to seize the day and to feel young and alive. Um, but like. It's kind of an uphill battle, because not to be a downer on a Friday night, guys, but I feel like the world is ending a little bit. Uh, dude, don't you think there's, a like, there's asteroids? Did you hear about the asteroid? 
Yeah, I have nothing to say about it. I have no jokes about it, but just what the fuck? <laughs> um, yeah, asteroids and global warming and the economy and Kesha is a millionaire, which to me is the most obvious sign that we're doomed. When Kesha came out, I was like, oh my god. Uh, she's one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, I think. Obviously. Um, but I, do, I feel like they're like paralyzed with this ang like anxiety about, and I'm really into the 2012 prophecies about the end of the world. Um, and I should say, if any of you like me are having like, fears about the end of the world or any kind of existential crisis, um, what you should avoid at all costs is BBC documentaries about quantum physics because they will push you over the edge if you're on the brink. Like Brian Cox, we mentioned. Um, do you guys know Brian Cox? You know Wonders of the Universe? And oh my god, that guy. He'll casually make these statements, especially at the end of every episode. He kind of summarizes what we've learned. Um, and I'll try and do his accent. I'll try and do a Brian Cox. Uh, but he actually, he always has one leg up on top of a mountain as well. He's, like, he's always like perched like this. Um, but he'll say, <clears throat> so our bodies, this rock, the planet, matter itself, it doesn't really exist at all. It's like coming up next, strictly come dancing. You're like, what? Like, what do you mean matter doesn't exist? And what the fuck? <laughs> um, I'm working on my British accents, guys. Uh, Brian Fox in the room. Pretty good? Okay, thanks. Um, but I, I don't be offended, but I think I've come up with, I think to do a British accent, you only need to be able to say two sentences. Um, the first one is, pack it in mini cheddars. Pack it in mini cheddars, please. Um, and the second one is, Mr. Potter, kindly return to the Gryffindor common room at once. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, guys. Do you guys like Harry Potter? Do you like HP? Woo! Are fans of Harry Potter? Yeah? I'm a huge HP fan. Um, have you ever read erotic fan fiction on the internet? <laughs> erotic Harry Potter fan fiction? <laughs> no, me neither. Never. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a website. Um, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and, uh, I, I do. Uh, I, I worry about the end of the world. So what I've done, guys, is I've written a song um, to help combat those feelings of anxiety about the end of the world. Um, and it's a really uplifting, cheery song, and uh, so I'm going to play a song. Okay, are you guys into that? Yeah. Okay. This is about, uh, it's, a, it's about a scenario in which um, the world ending might not be such a bad thing. It might actually be like a fun party time for all of us. <laughs> we might actually have a fun, kind of fun hangout, you know. Is that too much? Is that all right? I don't think I have to go to work today I'm just gonna stay in bed Because today is a special day The whole of London is crawling with undead <laughs> Crawling with undead It's a happy song, it's a cheerful <laughs> I've seen the movie so I know to steal a car And drive out to the woods but I kind of saw this coming And ever since Y2K I've been stockpiling canned goods <laughs> Stockpiling canned goods I'll see you later Bye <laughs> Now they're coming through the windows And zombies are surrounding my flat i I've gotta leave that bitch behind Just leave Janine behind And start running now Don't wait There's no time to hesitate got along that well anyway because she never does the dishes. And she leaves her stuff all over the living room and that's supposed to be our shared space. It's funny how the power dynamic flips in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. Janine needs a ride, she really desperately needs a lift, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm really sorry. Uh, the car is really full. Uh, god, in the front seat I have my coat. <laughs> In the, and in the back seat, I have uh, like a book. So, sorry. And, and you know, sorry, you can't get in the trunk, Janine. I'm really sorry. Don't you can't get in the boot. My pen is in there. It's funny how the power dynamic flips in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. Janine needs a ride. At this point, she really desperately needs a lift. I bet she wishes she hadn't left that passive aggressive note on the fridge. <laughs> It's a bad day for the planet, but the best day of my life. <laughs> Things. 
Um, and I go to, and I, you know, I just always think, oh, what's the point? And I, and I, when I go out to parties, I get anxious and I drink too much, I get too drunk. So I, and I shouldn't even go out, I shouldn't go to parties, because I'm not good at parties. But the problem is, every time I decide I'm going to stay home and just eat a lasagna and watch reruns of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I hear this voice in my head that, I don't know if you feel this, JB, but I, I always hear this, this voice in my head that's like, it's like, go out. Uh, I call it the, the you're only young once voice, the acronym the yo-yo voice. The yo-yo voice is always like, go out, kick over a garbage can, get drunk, make out with the stranger, or something. Uh, and I've actually figured out it's the voice of Kesha. <laughs> I put my finger on it because it is like, I finally figured it out because the voice, it is like, it's like, you're only young once. <laughs> <laughs> You're only young once. So this really mild American voice. Um, and I feel like the yo-yo voice has been the downfall of so many great people. Like the, the yo-yo voice is, um... Wait, you, you liked that joke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the yo-yo voice, like, uh, Captain Edward Smith on the Titanic was probably like, oh, guys, we should take it easy. There's a lot of icebergs around. We should go pretty slow. And then he heard Cash Up being like, you're only up once. And he was like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> um, and so I, and I, I feel a little bit uh, lost in my life, a little lost and directionless. I don't know if it's a generational thing. I don't know if you also feel this, JP, but I feel, um, I feel like I lack purpose. And I wish someone would just give me one clear task in my life to complete. And I could dedicate all my energy to that one thing and just forget everything else, right? Like if someone said, um, avenge the death of your father, that's obviously the best one. I'm um, so jealous of people with murdered fathers. Um, <laughs> or uh, if, uh, if the government would say, if the government would say, we'll pay your rent, you don't have to do anything, you have one mission in life, you have to find and befriend Sigourney Weaver. Like something fun, some fun task. Um, but I think we can all agree, like I think we're all on the same page. Uh, we established earlier that we're all on the same page that the ultimate quest, ultimate purpose in life is to find and destroy all seven horcruxes containing fragments of, of Lord Voldemort's soul. HP, Harry Potter, that guy, he never wakes up in the morning and is like, should I start a blog? Like, no, he's got it. He's got to kill Voldemort. That's his one thing. I'm so jealous. Because life is so vague and life is always like, Oh no, do whatever you want, it's your life, no big deal, but it better be good. You better be the best at it because your brother's a lawyer and we're very proud of him. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, yeah, I feel, yeah, a, a little bit lost in directions. I also feel a little bit gay, shockingly. Uh, anyone else feel a little bit gay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, and it just adds to the confusion of, I don't know why people are, are gay. I think it's just some lucky thing we're born with, like being born on a leap year or something. Um, but I think I've always been gay, because I remember at my grade five birthday party, uh, my mom very proudly saying to all the assembled guests that I resembled a young Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> I was there in my princess costume, like, who's, who's Kenneth Branagh? Um, But um, I, when I actually think of why am I gay, I, it comes down to um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a big one. Um, yeah, around puberty, I was just powerless to resist her karate moves. Um, and also, my grade six teacher, Miss Garo, Miss Melanie Garo. Anyone know her? <laughs> you know Melanie? <laughs> no, shut up. That'd be crazy. Um, no, Melanie Garo uh, was my grade six teacher, and she was just young and cool and hot, and she wore a leather jacket, and I like. I recently, yeah, and I recently found all these old um, pictures that I, I took all these photographs of her while she was writing on the board, like, the back of her head. Creepy, so creepy. And um, I've been, basically, I've been trying to find her on Facebook for nine and a half years, and um, I, about every six months I search for Melanie Garo, and I've never been able to find her, but recently I had a brainwave where I was like, Maybe she married the guy that she was dating in grade six, Peter Schmidt, his name was. Uh, so I searched Melanie Schmidt. Sure enough, I found her on Facebook. Um, she won't accept my friend request. Don't know what that's about, but I've written a song for her and her husband. <laughs> Just need a few it's kind of a creepy song, um, but it's from, oh, this is from um, Melanie Bro and her husband, Peter Schmidt. Okay, ready guys? Yeah. I want you.
you. <laughs> represents the pork chop. <laughs> it's like, no, it's made of vegetables. <laughs> Which vegetable wears a strap on is really the question. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> and the answer is all the vegetables wear them. Even the long-haired vegetables wear them. <laughs> That's the answer to the age-old question. <laughs> How do vegetables have sex? <laughs> so, but here's the thing that's even more confusing, guys. Um, that I actually, uh, I am super gay, obviously, but I kind of like men. Like, I've even, you'll be happy to hear it, Jamie, I've even dated uh, an eclectic group of very lucky men. Uh, and when I, but when I do get a crush on a man, like, it's uh, very intense. Like, once a year, I get a huge crush on a man. It's very all-consuming. And right now, that man for me is Don Cheadle, the actor Don Cheadle. Um, do you know, okay, I brought pictures of him in case you didn't know who he is. Um, He's from Ocean's Eleven, uh, Iron Man. Crash, Iron Man 2, what, what else, the traitor? Um, okay, this is Don Cheadle. This is, a, um, this is kind of a casual, I call this casual Don, that's maybe Don, Don at an event. You know. This, though, this is the Don Cheadle that haunts my dreams. Okay, um, JP, do you want to hold these? <laughs> How, can you pass them around? Just <laughs> so, so Don Cheadle, I've loved him for, for years, and like, I wake up in the morning and I think, what is Don wearing? Is he happy? Is he thinking of me? And um, this is the crazy part, this is a true story. I got the opportunity to meet him a few years ago, and I was in Toronto, and it was like 3 in the morning, and I heard this big kerfuffle outside of my window, like a whole hullabaloo, and uh, I looked out my window, and a film crew was there, and they were filming a movie called The Traitor in Toronto, IMDb, it's a good movie, and Don Cheadle was there, and I met him, uh, and I've written an epic love ballad, about what happened between us that day. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go, but have you guys had a nice time? And then we're gonna have intermission. <laughs> True story, me and Don Cheadle, um, and I will need those pictures back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don Cheadle's making a movie on the roof beside my room. He's gonna be filming a morning there from 3 a.m. to noon. School to watch Don Cheadle film a movie. And so I go to my window and I look outside. <laughs>
covered in food and I'm getting really hungry because I'm in the mood for some breakfast, like a croissant or a yogurt. <laughs> and so I ask for a yogurt and they say no way. And then I open my eyes like, what the fuck did you say? I the top of my lungs, what's going on? And then all of a sudden Don Cheadle comes up and he's acting really friendly and he's not stuck up. And I tell him what happened and he says, we need a revolution. <laughs>